the King's Highway was officially laid out in 1719, formalizing a road the early settlers had developed from a Lenny Lenape trail. The first entry in the Town Book of Middletown on December 30, 1667 lists 36 residential lots were established on the street. Much of King's Highway was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1974. Penelope Lane was named after Penelope Stout, the so-called mother of Middletown, who was among the earliest of settlers. At one time, believed to be the oldest in the village, the Hartshorn House is at the corner of New Monmouth Road. Ancient features are plenty, including great fireplaces, hand-hewn beams, chair rails, cupboards, and exceptionally fine brickwork. Early settler Richard Hartshorn came to live at this property at the end of his life. When he bought the property, there was probably a house on it which he improved to his own specifications. The contract is recorded in the town book of Middletown. Much of what we see today is likely from the 19th century. Hartshorn had bought out the patent of one of the original patentees and had added numerous other tracts of land. His lands included all of Sandy Hook, much of the Navasink Highlands, and acreage on both sides of the King's Highway. He wrote to friends back home, I am satisfied that people can live better here than they can in Old England. In his capacity as Monmouth County's likely first lawyer, his name appears many times in old documents. He served as Middletown's representative in governmental matters and helped settle the dispute between East Jersey and West Jersey boundary. A Quaker, he entertained George Fox, the religion's founder, in this house. Hartshorn's will set aside a half acre in his pear orchard as a family burying ground. One pear tree was still there a few years ago. His son's stone is still visible. Marlpit Hall is now a museum of the Monmouth County Historical Association. Its kitchen and loft section dates circa 1686 and was built for James Grover. It was expanded and renovated by the Taylors in the mid-18th century. It is unique among historic buildings because few structural changes have been made since the latter date, such as moldings, turnings, cabinets, paneling, and fireplaces. All the furnishings are authentic Monmouth County antiques, 
some from Middletown families. The front parlor is known as one of the most beautiful rooms in America. Members of the Taylor family owned the house until the 1930s. Threatened by demolition, it was purchased and restored by Mrs. J. Emery Haskell, who furnished it with some of her own antiques before donating the house to the Monmouth County Historical Association. Just east of Marlpit Hall is Orchard Home, built by Joseph Dorset Taylor in 1854. The mansion's size indicates the prosperity in the village at this time. Marlpit Hall next door, referred to as the Grandfather Homestead by the Taylors, eventually became a tenant farmer house. Orchard Home had a large wing for servants on the rear connected to the main house by a two-story breezeway. That was torn down in the 1940s. Note the well with wooden pulley, the smokehouse, outbuildings, the proportions of the entrance, and the balconied reception hall. Deep window recesses indicate the wide space between double walls. Mary Holmes Taylor was the last of her family to live here. An auction after her death sent many of the Taylor heirlooms to the Metropolitan Museum of Art.
Across the railroad, on the corner of Red Hill Road and the King's Highway, is a residence that was the village ordinary, the term then used for a tavern. Sometimes called the Rising Sun Tavern and the Rainbow Inn, it accommodated both villagers and stagecoach travelers until 1840. After that, a George Bound lived here, and it is thus sometimes called the Bound House. In 1700, the tap room was the scene of a confrontation of villagers against the governor's deputy who was trying to arrest a local man for non-payment of taxes. And legend has it that Mad Anthony Wayne, the daring revolutionary general who captured the fort at Stony Point without firing a shot, stopped in here for refreshment one day and left his initials etched into the bar. An exposure in an upper room shows a wall made of bricks, perhaps brought as ballast in a Dutch sailing vessel. West of this property is an area fondly called the Fourth Ward, named after a tough area of New York City. Next to the bridge is an 18th century leather shop, then a Sam Taylor house circa 1830, and across the road is the blacksmith's home of the same era. Back on the west side, a tannery and the first store, both circa 18th century, then the Beekman house on the corner of Holland Road. Further up Red Hill Road is the Clinton AME Zion Chapel. It was named for Clinton Heath, a former slave from North Carolina who came here to work on the Beekman farm after the Civil War. The chapel resulted from prayer meetings he organized among other families he brought to Middletown. This building duplicates one built in 1890, which an arsonist burned down in the mid 20th century. Returning to the King's Highway, the blacksmith shop at the corner of Conover Avenue is circa 1825. Before the turn of the 18th century, it was horse racing which provided excitement along this stretch of the King's Highway. A local winner received this handmade silver bowl in 1699 made by the renowned silversmith Jesse Kipp. Christ Church, boasting the second oldest Church of England parish in New Jersey and dating back to the 1680s, was formally organized in 1702 and chartered by George II in 1738. The present building is dated 1836, built around the frame and on the foundation of a circa 1746 church that may contain timbers of the old blockhouse. Why was it sometimes fancifully called the Pirate Church? 1. A debunked legend stated that Captain Kidd had cut a cross in the wall which kept reappearing over the pulpit. 2. A trial of pirate Moses Butterworth took place on the church site when the village blockhouse and jail once stood there. Minutes of the court sessions in 1701 record how villagers freed the pirate and jailed the governor and court staff for several days. Three. William Leeds left the church and a handsome glebe, a gift of land. He was later the subject of a likely untrue rumor that he was a conscious stricken pirate trying to amend for his old ways. Old First Church, organized in 1688, is the oldest Baptist church in New Jersey. 
The present building is dated 1832 and replaces two older structures, a meeting house that stood here until 1734, and a church that was constructed in that same year after the congregation was given adjoining land by the Hartshorn family. That land contract stated that the Hartshorns could use the church for Quaker meetings whenever they wished. During the Revolution, the British were said to have removed the pews and used the building as a hospital. The Middletown Reformed Church was organized in 1836 and their building was constructed that same year. It was built on the site of the village's first school. This house was built by Edward Taylor circa 1750. Some say a sailor must have built this house because the walls and doorway show a slight curve like the hull of a ship. Marquis de Lafayette was said to have been entertained in this parlor. The house is sometimes referred to as the Dr. Taylor House, after the man who lived here between the 1820s and 1880s, or as the Henry Taylor House, after the man who lived in it in the early 1900s. It remained a Taylor property until the 1940s. The day following the Battle of Monmouth, British generals Clinton and Cornwallis entered the King's Highway via different routes. They brought their wounded to the Baptist Church and Christ Church to convalesce. The Hendrickson Morford House owes its fame to a huge cedar which may have once stood on its lawn. Local lore says that its welcoming shade was the lunching spot for British Generals Clinton and Cornwallis that day after the Battle of Monmouth. The house combines Georgian features with Victorian ornamentation and is ascribed a circa 1830 date, though a portion is likely older. Across the highway are two old burying grounds side by side. The Hendrickson family yard is the smaller one to the east. It dates to the late 18th century. The Presbyterian yard is to the west. That latter yard belonged to a Presbyterian church that likely dissolved in the late 1700s. Some of the oldest settlers were buried here at one time, including John Bowne, who died in 1715 or 16. The Franklin Academy building looks exactly as it did when it was built in 1836, with cupola, hand-split shingles, shutters, 12 over 12 windows, and tall double doors at the entrance. Only the roof is a replacement.
A local stock company built the academy to provide schooling to prepare boys for college and girls for the useful and ornamental arts. Boys were taught on one floor and girls on the other. Later, the building became the village public school and then the village library. It lay abandoned for a number of years until it was converted to a residence in 1950. As many of the interior original features as possible were retained, including the wainscoting and worn staircase and balustrade. 